On today's show, we'll celebrate a wildlife conservation achievement. It began in Minnesota, the 30th anniversary of Pheasants Forever. Bored? Looking for something crazy to do this winter? Well, we've got the answer. Go climb some ice. Yes, ice climbing could be your thing, as you'll see. Ever hear of skiing yurt to yurt? What to what? It's a winter blast on Minnesota's Gunflint Trail and good for you too. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week recalls one of my favorite bird hunts for Texas quail. Those stories and more, next. I got a sticker in here. Minnesota's select GMC dealers present Minnesota Bound. From the North Country, here's Ron Chera and Raven, the Black Lamb. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, 30 years ago, a group of Minnesotans got together concerned about the future of the ringneck pheasant. Well today, three decades later, they are still working to make pheasants forever. Behold the gaudy ringneck pheasant, game bird of America's heartland. A thrill to hunt, loved by bird dogs, and fine tasting out of the oven. But in recent decades, this beautiful bird has been facing an uncertain future down on the farm, from Kansas to Iowa, Minnesota to the Dakotas. Back on March 7, 1982, a Minnesota outdoor writer, Dennis Anderson, penned these words. It was inevitable marshes would be drained, he wrote. Inevitable that more fields would be plowed, more ditches burned and Minnesota's ringneck population would slowly dwindle. It was inevitable. Anderson's newspaper column describing how Minnesota's farm country had been turned into a black desert inspired a conservation organization with the name Pheasants Forever and with one goal, restoring grassland cover in the nation's farm belt. 30 years later, the goal remains, but thousands now seek it. CEO of Pheasants Forever, Howard Vincent. They actually believe that they could change the face of, you know, a pheasant habitat in the state of Minnesota. And, you know, everyone, every other state started looking over our fence and realized that they could have an impact as well. So how much wildlife habitat has been developed or protected? Uh, it's over 8 million acres. That we can't do this ourselves. That 8 million acres that we've impacted directly is what we have been able to control through our chapter volunteers and our farm bill biologists and our habitat specialists within our organization. In Nobles County, Minnesota, members of one of Pheasants Forever's first chapters made the very first purchase, a 30-acre bean field converted into grassland nesting cover. But things have changed down on the farm in recent years. $8 corn, ethanol, the ability for farmers to drain wetlands, start farming every conceivable inch of their property, and we've lost on an average about two million a annually over the last five years. We're at a net loss for wildlife habitat in the last 10 years. We can correct that, but it has to be done in Washington, D.C. It has to be done with a concerted effort of not just Pheasants and Quail Forever, but all the wildlife organizations and the farm community as well. Pheasants Forever's business model is pretty simple, but very successful. Money raised by a local Pheasants Forever chapter stays local. If you raise $50,000 at a local banquet, the $50,000 goes towards local habitat projects. PF Vice President Joe there's, Dugan. There's features on the landscape, grass, wetlands, marshes, cattails, shrubs, brush, trees. Those are where pheasants live and those are the things we have to have in the landscape to provide for pheasants and other wildlife. Over time, Pheasants Forever has put together a conservation army, if you will. There are chapter leaders and volunteers, 700 chapters across the country that are empowered to do things good for wildlife in their own backyard. To celebrate and renew their conservation goals, the organization is having a 30th anniversary bash called Pheasant Fest, a three-day gathering of ringneck hunters, conservationists, honey dogs, and more dogs set for February 15th to the 18th at the Minneapolis Convention Center. The number one attraction to the show, as you well know, is dogs. 
man, woman, young, old, child, you know, adult, we love our bird dogs. It's $10 for adults to get in, or you can become a member of Pheasants Forever. $35 gets you a three-day pass. Thousands are expected to attend Pheasant Fest, but the hoopla isn't expected to change the mission. Very simply, it began 30 years ago and remains today. Pheasants forever. When we return and escape from winter boredom, find some ice and climb it. Yes, you heard me. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Renewal by Anderson, makers of quality replacement windows and doors. Connecticut, better water flows from better thinking. And by Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Rear vision camera. Multiflex seats. EPA estimated 32 highway. The 2013 GMC Terrain, over 100 standard features that make you more capable. That's professional grade. Now lease this 2013 GMC Terrain SLE for around $199 per month. Welcome back. You know, if you're into steelhead fishing in Minnesota along the North Shore, there's a special river up there called the Devil Track. I've been there many, many spring times. But would you know, there are some folks who go to the Devil Track in winter, not for the fish, but for the ice. For three hardy souls, adventure has no boundary. It's uh, brisk, brisk squared. Maybe it should especially at 22 below zero. On Lake Superior's Devil's Track River, cold feet aren't really an option. They're more like part of the deal. We are just north of Grand Marais, about three miles. Systems go. We're basically skiing and snowshoeing uh, up a river. It just winds up this beautiful canyon. You actually lose the sense that you're in Minnesota. It's going to take us about 45 minutes to an hour to walk up to our site. Snow is nice so far. It's a little cold, so it's a little slow. But we've got a nice layer of powder on top. It's a really beautiful canyon. It's laced with this really beautiful red rock. Steve Davis, Pat Mackin, and Ryan McLaughlin are trudging towards a little-known Minnesota gem. Ever heard of Nightfall? A 240-foot Minnesota gem. It's amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. One of Minnesota's tallest waterfalls. It's pretty spectacular. Named Nightfall because few people can hike in here, climb the ice, and then get out before dark. Nightfall is definitely uh, one of Minnesota's premier climbing spots. Not an easy one to beat, but getting to the top will be easier said than done. Flaking out the rope, which does a couple things, make sure that there are no knots or kinks in it. Steve zero, works the ropes, Ryan will climb to the top. Ooh. If he can get there. Wow, that gets the adrenaline going. That was scary. Double back, good to go. Let's do it. 240 feet straight up on ice. Minnesota is quite an excellent place to ice climb, and, and a lot of people don't know it. Is it strenuous? Yeah. Especially at 20 below. After all, Steve's job is to just stand there and work the ropes. Belaying, it's called, 
You have to develop the technique first, otherwise it's tremendously draining and difficult. When I'm ice climbing, I'm completely 100% focused on climbing. Um, you know, all the problems and the troubles that I have in my life, it just yeah, kind of seems to slip away. When it's really cold like this, oftentimes the outermost layer is pretty brittle, but he's getting some good sticks in there. In life, everyone picks a path. These guys just happen to choose straight up. Yeah! Oh, that was amazing. It's just an absolute gem that we have this in Minnesota, and I feel really lucky to be able to climb this. Even if the climb lives up to its name, Nightfall. It definitely lives up to its name, Nightfall. <laughs> Absolutely. Need exercise that's fun? Head to the Gunflint and go cross-country skiing yurt to yurt. A what to what? You'll find out. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Maintenance-free furniture, comfort, elegance, and recycling combined. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. What to do in Minnesota in the wintertime? That's a question we always face. One time I took a Texas guy ice fishing and he said, man, you Minnesotans are starved for entertainment. Well, what I should have done is taken him cross-country skiing to a yurt. Way out, wild spots still exist, seemingly untouched by no hand other than Mother Nature's. In the cold world of cross-country skiing, Hey, are these moose tracks? Fresh tracks equal a Northwoods form of pure nirvana. Oh, those are definitely moose tracks. Up in northern Minnesota, skiers have access to darn near 200 miles of single and double track skiing along the Gunflint Trail. Uh, every time you turn a new corner, it, it looks new and it looks different. It's all about the ups and the downs of deep wood skiing. Oh, <laughs> Good sure, one! Sure is I'm soft going. snow. <laughs> We've come to pick ourselves up and focus on two remote trail systems called the Lace and the Banadat. It's a public trail, I maintain it. Ted Young uh, we... grooms these trails as part of his Northwoods business called Boundary Country Treks. For these two skiers, the journey is only half the reason they come. Here we are at the yurt. Questions begin at the end of the trail. It's a surprise to some folks. Well, is this a teepee? Is this a, a tent? And no, it's actually just more a semi-permanent structure, structure that's out in the wilderness. See, Boundary Country Treks maintains a couple of Northwood shelters along the trail system. They're about 12 miles apart, and they are, in a word, different. We've, how many times have we contemplated staying here forever, you know? Technically, it's a gur, and it's a, a Mongolian house. Ted hauls in visitors' gear by snowmobile, then comes camp's best part. Tonight we're having the Mongolian fire pot dinner, a tradition known mostly by Gunflint locals. The charcoal is to warm the, the broth. Ted whips up a rare Northwoods moment, best experienced in the cold dead of winter. Well, it's yurt fair. <laughs> you just have to ask him to make it. Think of this as a fondue. After a full day on the cold trail, we end up here, 
bellied up to a warm table, surrounded by friends with nowhere to go. After all, we're home. Time is what you do have out here. And that's the, that's the wonderful thing about it. So it's nice to take a few hours to eat a meal, enjoy conversation in each other. The only worry on this night, keeping the fire stoked and the yurt tepid at 32 bitter degrees below zero. Folks up here call that sleeping weather. The yurt's nice and warm. It's a great place to end the trip. Eventually, night becomes day again and we find ourselves back out on the chilly trail. Just what we love about winter and its hidden secrets in the land of 10,000 frozen lakes and just as many snowy trails. When you can ski for miles and miles in dense forest, it just doesn't feel any better. Still ahead, a Texas quail hunt with a remarkable young guide you'll want to meet, and some cactus encounters that also aren't easy to forget. I got a whole bunch of them. Now. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center, bringing outdoor safety tips from the experts at HCMC to your mobile device. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff sharing their real story about responsible, ethical agriculture for life. Visit therealstorymn.com to learn more. What are some common misconceptions random people in Minneapolis have about farming today? Let's find out. I would like to ask farmers if they could go back to the way it was. To go back to the old days isn't a real valid statement. We might have bigger machines, we might use nutrients, but our carbon footprint per acre, per bushel today, is so much less than it was in the 70s and the 50s. Get to know more about farming and for your chance to win free groceries for a year, visit therealstorymn.com. Time for our Minnesota Bound Classic and we're going to take you to Texas for a January quail hunt I went on one time. And there I found a young man who I swear someday will be the President of the United States. Out in the West Texas town of Midland where the cactus flats rush to the sky, where oil rigs grow taller than the trees, there's a remarkable young man who I swear someday will be president of the United States and will have bird dogs in the White House. Riley, load. Meet David Harrison, quail hunter, diehard, and the only teenager in America who's organized a Quail Forever chapter in his hometown and lobby state politicians for more quail habitat in all of Texas. Just this last weekend, we went to travel with a group of fellow youth to Austin, Texas. We talked up with the Speaker of the Texas House and then many of the representatives. Turn right, this way. Oh yes, David also works as a blue quail guide for West Texas Wings. Point up here. Somewhere amid these cactus fields was a creature that runs like a ringneck pheasant one minute, then holds tighter than a cactus spine the next. Right underneath him. Okay, so David isn't a perfect kid, but his devotion to quail at such a young age bodes well for the future of quail hunting. I took feathers. The bobwhite quail and quail in general, uh, population numbers are declining all over the United States. And if we don't do something, we may not have any quail one day. And, and Texas is blessed with, with the number of, the amount of birds we have, but it may not always be that way. And, and that's something I'm gonna hopefully die fighting for. Blue quail, scale quail, cotton top. Speaking of hazards, I learned in a painful way about watching your step in a cactus patch. My, my, my. Ah, I got a whole bunch of them there. I don't know how I did that. I don't normally take my pants down in front of fellow hunters, I'll tell you that. <laughs> whoa! Yo, whoa, whoa! Woo. 
This is a male. How do you know? And how do you tell is the female has a, this distinct uh, dark black pin stripe. Oh, I so see the male it. it doesn't. It's just very buff it's and buff. silver. But David's goal never wavers. He wants a future that includes quail hunting. Quail forever and pheasants forever presented the, the best circumstances to, uh, t for a local chapter to, to, to maintain and actually get things done. When we had our first meeting, we had about 40 people over there, and I think I was younger than them all of them, about, about, about 35 years at least. To get up and speak in front of that is, is, is quite challenging, but you know, it's something that has to be done. They've hunted through all their childhood, these people I'm speaking to, and they've had a lot of birds. You know, I, but I can see in the near future where my kids maybe not get that, might not get that opportunity. My Lord. I couldn't hit my cheeks with both hands today. Coming soon, I swear, a quail hunter in the White House. <laughs> Lots of quail and my young guide, for sure, who get my vote. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid of the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sherrill, of course, always the star of the show, Raven. Guests appearing on Minnesota Bound receive gift certificates to Crave Restaurants. Fresh, vibrant, American. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.